What is going on everyone? DJ's here back with another replay analysis commentary. I know it's been a hot while since I've reviewed one of my own games, so I'm happy to show you one of my own games in Fog recently on the Global League ladder. A lot of you have been begging me, DJ, please, please bring a replay analysis of your own game. And I'm here to bring it to you finally. It's been a while, I know. This is an interesting matchup. Max vs. Grit. Before we get into that though, I just want to say I'm not going to go very much over this map since I already did a replay analysis commentary on this map back in the day. Toulouse playing Average Joe. If you haven't checked that out, I implore you to check out that video because I actually explain in more in detail what to expect from this map right here. Struggle grinding for you, uh, you ignorant swine out there who don't know what struggle grinding is. So I recommend checking that out. Basically, you want to focus on the top and the bottom, and like in short, you want to just focus on these three properties and these three properties because there's only like two contested properties in the middle, uh, so you're better off contesting the top and the bottom. Anyway, what we're here today is not about the map. What we're here today about is this matchup right here, Max vs. Grit, and when I first ha saw this matchup, I was like, yes, I'm Max, I'm gonna smash Grit, it's gonna hurt him so bad. Uh, so the reason I chose Max on this map is because when you think when you get a two base map like this in the in the fog, your default should be max, let's be honest. Olaf isn't as viable because typically two base maps are smaller. The two base maps have less units, so your Winter Fury is going to do less damage. So typically Olaf's off the table for two base maps. Next up you got Eagle and then you're going to have less units for Lightning Strike, so I typically don't pick Eagle on two base as well. Uh, that leaves Max and Grit if Grit does drop. And typically I just pick Max because he's easier to deal with. You can pump out recons and tanks and shit and it's a lot of fun. Grit, though, is an interesting pick. I'm going to go more into detail as the map uh, match develops. But from this first glimpse I saw, I was like, oh, man, I'm going to beat the shit out of him. However, we're talking about Spoot here. And for you guys who don't know who Spoot is, Spooticus, as some may know him, uh, he's a pretty damn good player. He body bagged Tordred on, on Stalling Rod. I, I watched that game. That was the worst I've ever seen Tordred get beaten. He beat Tordred like Tordred beat me in that live matchup that I did. That was like the worst time I got beat by Tordred. Of course, I stream it live uh, at that time, but really bad, decisive uh, victory over him. So Spoot's a great player. Uh, you know in the Fog Ladder, there's like four top players. There, You got Go, you got Hogat, you got Incug, you got Tordred. And then there's kind of a drop-off. Then there's like me, Kantbe, Cookie Lamb, Firem, I'm uh, Average Joe. And, you know, I'm probably forgetting some, but Spoot... I think he has the potential to get into that top four quadrant, the top five, just like a bit above the rest. Uh, I think he's, he's he's pretty close to Tordred skill level, if not equal. Uh, so I think he's, he's he's definitely above me in skill level. I'm just going to say it out loud. I'm, I'm honest with myself these days. Even though I shot up to near 1500 recently, I've had a kind of a, a renaissance of fog. I've gotten really good at my, my score at least. Uh, I still understand that Spoot, he plays less games. In the games he does play, he plays them very interestingly. Uh, non-conventionally, that's why I also enjoy watching his games. He doesn't play very conventionally. He B-copter spams before he builds tanks, like some weird stuff you don't expect. Uh, so he, it's a treat to watch him. Anyway, so I saw this match and was like, oh, I should win this, but it's not going to be easy. This is Spoot we're talking about here. But it's only two base, so Grit's probably not as good. There's going to be less infantry walls, like there's a lot of roads, like oh, I'll just pump out recons and tanks. Everything will be fine. I'll start pumping out copters every single turn. If I build a copter every single turn and I get enough income, then I'll have one more unit count than he will every single turn, because Grit doesn't really spam copters. So that was my game plan going in. I was like, spam copters, put pressure, get the income lead, and then slowly but surely whittle Grit down. Actually, not slowly. I would need to mash the shit out of him before he can uh, proliferate enough artillery to like box me out. So I was like, I'm going to control the top, I'm going to control the bottom, then slowly push in the middle and win the game. Uh, just through a war of attrition and through having more units and having more copters and whatnot. So that was my game plan. However, uh, this sort of changed as the match went on. I'm going to give a live commentary of what goes on through my head as it goes through, uh, as the game goes on. But I also decided to choose this uh, fog where it only shows my units and my intelligence that I gather through my line of sight. Instead of showing everything that the opponent does, just to relive what I was really feeling during the game. What was racing through my mind. Uh, how would I react and maybe how you would how you would react would be different not knowing what your opponent has uh, So let me know if you like this in the comment section where I only show one point of view in the fog instead of both points of view Just add a little more mystery mystique to the game Let me know if you prefer that or you prefer the standard one that I've been doing where it just shows both sides Anyway, without further ado, let us get into this game. It is interesting. The game starts off normally We exchange cordial exchanges. He says, oh Deej, I'm a big fan of your videos 
keep up the great work. Whenever I hear that, I know I'm screwed because usually uh, I lose when people are very kind to me in the beginning because I let up on the, my usual anger and meanness. So I built an early recon. I could have built it at the bottom over here, but I chose in the middle just to put some pressure on his strong side. See, this is red strong side up here. I want to put pressure early so his artillery cannot get set up in this forest over here and start guarding this property. So I wanted to put pressure on the strong side. I really want to just put all out pressure, get control of all three of these properties and get control of all of these three properties. The middle, you know, it's, I don't know what's going to go on there, but it's probably going to lose it because there's a lot of forests and stuff. And he's probably going to bunch up all his artillery there, but I'm going to focus on the top. I'm going to focus on the bottom. No big deal. So Spooty does his little turn. I move out my recon. Okay. I skipped that turn for some reason, but basically I move my recon out. I don't build any other things. I saved up for a tank this turn and a recon, I believe. I build a tank and a recon, just double the pressure. Now I build a recon two turns later to the bottom. This is less, it's gonna take them a lot longer to even cap these. So this is just more to prevent this property maybe, or even this property right here. They're, you know, he's not gonna get those too easily without artillery support. I wanna force him to use his artillery to defend his infantry. He's not getting that shit for free, nuh -uh. So I use my recon at the top. You don't wanna use your recons in the middle. You have these mountains. It's just, you're gonna, it's not worth it. You wanna bring your recons to the top and you wanna bring your recons to the bottom and do the heavy lifting and vision because there's not much vision coverage over here. Uh, whereas these mountains cover up pretty much everything in the center. Old Spooty Dude does his thing and nothing really happens. I move my recons into position. I wanna get some intel, like what's he bringing on over here? I try to get this property, this is a little greedy. Getting these properties can be a little greedy because there can be an artillery in wait over here, a tank, an infantry, a recon, what have you. Uh, so it's not a given property by any means. So that's a little greedy by me, but you know, I have recons, I have tanks, I'm ready to go, locked and loaded. I only move one space because I just want to get this vision over here on these two properties. I want to see what I'm dealing with over here. I don't want to allow that by any means whatsoever. And uh, you know, I'm not trying to go too deep where I can get hit by an artillery or a tank. So everything is going fine according to plan until he gets vision via the mountain and then uses a tank. A tank, and we're talking turn se day seven, and Grit has a tank. And I was like, what? And they got the early comp tower. I don't even have the comp tower yet. He's got an early tank and, uh, and an early comp tower. I was like, what the hell am I dealing with here? I thought there would be a recon. I thought there'd be an artillery. Why is there a tank? So I was a little confused by that. And there was no artillery backup. So I was like, uh, okay, well, I guess I should just back up then. So I, I retreat my infantry. Not before I start capping a bunch of other crap. Capping crap, you know what I mean? So I bring my, my tank in, uh, in, in range in case he tries to cap that property. I keep my recon, not quite in range, but I want to see what's going on. I am able to deny this property temporarily. He does not see me right here, so luckily my recon got there in, in time. Even though I built it two turns later at the bottom than at the top, it's still doing its job. Everything's just going swell. According to plan, I'm pumping out recons. Three recons, man. Who, 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 you know? And then I bring this over here just because I want to get some overlap on the city in case he tries to get it. I also do not have this control of this mountain like he does, so my vision's a little, a little weak in the center. You know, I'm just trying to, trying to do the do, get some vision. NBD, NB Dizzle. He tries to capture this property. I see his infantry moving up there, so I'm like, uh, shist. My recon is out of range, so mm, whatever. Then I see the artillery, I'm like, okay, Recon, you've done your job. I see the first artillery in this match. Am I prepared to go in yet? Like, I I basically have a strong side at the top now. I have two tanks and I have two art uh, Recons. One's more in position than the other, but I just have one tank and one Recon at the bottom just to hold down the fort in case there is one artillery. And Spooth wisely gets vision first before going down there to his demise to my Recon. So unfortunately for me, he's able to preserve that infantry Slows down the cap. I know there's a recon in that forest or will be soon or a tank or some crap. So I'm not going to go crazy and start attacking these infantry by any means. So if I recall correctly, I just put my recon in range. I want us to be able to put it in this forest here so I can see vision. Every time he builds a B-copter, I will be able to see it if I have that recon in that forest. So that is a crucial forest to uh, control over, especially for him. I don't think he's going to get control of that forest, but if he did, he'd be able to see every turn I build a B-copter, which is every turn because I love B-copters. I love B copters, man. I love B copters. So I bring in these infies, bring back the recon a little bit, because I'm like, oh, there's definitely an artillery there. I still want to keep vision on this property right here. I don't keep vision on this property right here, but I'm not, I'm not going in there. And then I get a little ballsy. I'm like, ah, I know I'm in range of that artillery, but YOLO. I bring in my recon, kill with the infantry. Then I bring my tank up. I thought about attacking it. I am in range, but I'm like, there's probably another artillery there. 
And there's a tank there and it's gonna finish me off. So I basically kind of sack my recon, but he can't see it yet. So he has to use a infantry to actually see it. That is the problem with this map. One thing I noticed about this map right here, it's two base, so you have limited units, but it takes a unit to reveal what's in the forest. So it, sometimes it, it's hard to reveal what's in the forest when you only have 18 units and only like five are in position. You can't have five attacks. You're gonna need two of those to reveal what's there. So even revealing what's in here, it's gonna take him one, two units to even attack one time. So keep that in mind. These forests are really pesky. It is hard to find what is going on in the forest and then also attack on a base light map like this, which kind of changed my idea of why Grid is so weak. I was like, he's actually not that weak. It's hard to find the artillery in the forest while also maintaining enough firepower to also attack at the same time when I'm only pumping out of two bases. But I still barrel off the tankies. The tankies are coming. He brings it in, he attacks the infantry, and he gets a shot off. Two birds, one stone, he's gonna finish off that infi, but I think my recon lives with one HP. Now, one HP recon, like I said, is crucial. It's better than having a no HP recon. It gives you a lot of intel. However, in this instance, I usually like full HP recons because they're actually useful as max. They can actually do a lot of damage. So I was happy it lived, but I was also kind of upset that he killed both units in the same turn. He starts capping this property. <laughs> You sweet summer child, I'm not letting you cap that property. No siree, I need the income lead. Already, already, 3,000 income lead. Oh, it's only gonna get bigger from there. I'm gonna exert my max pressure. Max, using max pressure campaign, mmm. -hmm. So I have my two tanks in range. I can get some nice shots off on these artilleries right here. Although this tank is blocking this one from going in. However, one, two, three, four, five, six, can't quite reach that second artillery. Unfortunately, so while my attack will have to wait, there's the artillery that I knew was going to be there, so that is going to cap. I, it's just, you know, part of life. It's, he's going to cap that property. It is what it is, but you do what you do. I'll bring my units in range. I don't go for the attack here. Instead, I get a free hit off. I see the artillery's over here. I'm like, eh. I mean, if anything, he might have a tank, but a tank attacking my tank? Ooh, it's not going to be pretty. Grit versus Max? It doesn't matter who... If he attacks first, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna beat the shit out of him with my tank superiority. So I wasn't scared in the slightest. So I'm bringing my tanks up to the top now. I'm like, the middle? Yeah, he's gonna win the middle. That's just, uh, it sucks, but he's gonna get this property. I'm probably not gonna get this property. It sucks, but that's reality. I'm gonna get the top three and the top bottom, and I'll still have an income lead. Uh, yeah, and you know, build out some uh, copters in return. I got two balls here. I should not have done this. I saw I lost over there. All my units are basically at the top. I have a few down here, so it's not complete suicide, Mang's uh, infantry suicide, but risky nonetheless. I don't know if there's artillery there. I don't know if there's one in the forest. I don't even know if there's one there. He could have. No, he, he doesn't have one there yet because I have my recon there. But. Starting to build the copter chain. Every turn after this, I believe I build a copter. Every single turn. I don't care how many anti area has. I don't care how many copters it has. I'm gonna be pumping out them bee copters like a bee. So, he brings in his tank. First strike. Not gonna attack in my tank. He knows better. Attacks my infantry. Five damage. Puny. Pathetic damage to my infantry. My infantry does one damage back. He's like, that was the weakest shit I ever saw. Then his infantry kills off the one HP infantry. Revealing it at the same time. Again, he gets an attack off and also reveals at the same time. Very smart management of these units. I like to add that Spoot also takes six freaking days per turn. So, uh, I don't know. At this point, yeah, it took like, I have to wait a week for one of his turns. And it takes like ten minutes of my time. And then I have to wait another week for his turn. So, it's a little, there's definitely uh, a difference in time uh, difference here. I think he, at the like the end of the game, thereabouts, he had like three days left and I had 37 days left or something of the sort. Just to put in perspective our different play styles. He's a little more of the Inkugark kind of guy, calculating, oh, the select roll here, select roll there. I look at the game, I'm like, um, maybe I'm like, in my car, take a glance, mm, that looks pretty damn good to get home. There you have it. So, difference, intuition versus calculation. I'm definitely more on the intuition uh, side, but you know, I played a lot of shit, so we'll see. Anyway, I get control of all three up here. He has control of none of those. Look at that income. 3k income lead. Yeah, I'm not gonna let that shit happen. Uh-uh. That's, that's just too much in my face. The copters are coming to play. Yeah, and then I bring in the, the recon. I'm like, all right. I need. I see a bunch of shit down here. I'm like, okay, he's probably weak at the top then. Let's catch him off guard. Sure. 
huge. Bring it all in, boys. And then for some reason, I wait to put my tank there. I was probably debating for a bit. Boom, 4-4. Four, four. So his tanks are, or his artillery weakened. I'd prefer if they were dead, though, because he can heal his artillery. Grid is not really concerned about unit value. He's consider, concerned about unit numbers because artillery are 6K, very cheap, but they can do up to 10K or more damage. Uh, so it's more about keeping them alive than actually like having like rockets or medium tanks and neo tanks. He just wants to have numbers. So I really want to finish off these artillery. I don't want them to heal up and then they come back and he has unit count over me. I'm depending on having unit count to beat him. The only way I beat him is by unit count and that is by pumping out copters every single turn because Grit just naturally is going to have the KD beating you. That's just how it is. It's just how life is. Grit will always be winning KD. A competent Grit will be. And you have to rely on economy, on your powers, etc. to make up for that KD ratio. But Grit should be winning the KD through the whole match. That's just how it goes. A competent Grit. There's shitty Grits out there. I know it. Hashtag shitty Grit. But that's not the typical high-level player like Spoot. I'm like, I need to get the, I need to beat this boy to death. So, I, I retreat at the bottom. I see what's going on here. I'm basically all at the top now. I got four tanks in position. I got a copter in position. I got a recon in position. I'm like, bring it on, boy. Spoot, first thing he does, get vision. Smart, doesn't have a single recon. Grits usually build a bunch of recons because of the vision issues inherent with not building more tanks like usual and more focusing on the artillery with one vision. Smart move. Not even focus on recons because the mountains do all the work for him. That's why Grit is better on this map than I originally thought. The mountains, you don't need recons. And revealing the forest with base light makes it incredibly hard. So Grit is actually better than Olaf on this map. I don't know if he's better than Max, but I think Eagle is actually the best on this map. After playing this, I think Eagle is the best because despite it being a two base, he can beat up Grit pretty well. He doesn't mind like taking his time. Whereas Max is kind of forced. You're kind of forced to like... Keep attacking, keep attacking, even if you're taking damage as Mac, you're kind of Max, you're kind of forced to keep that pressure on. If you do not pressure Grit, he will beat you eventually. So I was just inherently just, ugh, I was pushed to be offensive this whole game. I couldn't really think of a, an advanced plan because I always had to have that pressure up. So that was kind of inherent to Max, and I was kind of frustrated by that. He gets that property, I gave it up. Ooh, he got a little greedy over here, but uh, despite him getting this property and might maybe getting this property, probably. Uh, I still have the property advantage. I have had 2k, soon to be 3k, 4k, 5k, who knows how many k is possible, but... Whoa, where did that come from, I wonder? No vision. I don't have to control this mountain. I don't know, where, where is that artillery? I have no idea. Grit's uh, strength is coming into play now. Smartly, he attacks the dead one, or the near dead one, so I don't have unit count. If I had one alive and one half alive or whatever, one could reveal, the other could attack, but now... I need to dedicate a full HP tank just to reveal an artillery. It won't even attack. Just to reveal an infantry, I have to dedicate one whole tank, which is frustrating as hell. And then this tank comes in and is like, no one's business. Okay, you get a first strike, but I don't give a shit. We're equal, buh. And then he brings this artillery into this forest or somewhere in this vicinity. And I have no idea what's going on. I have vision denial in the center, but I have vision strength in the sides, in the top and the bottom. And these artillery, man, they're so freaking annoying. And he gives a little, little, not a trap, but I think I go, I go ham here. So I, I want to keep the pressure up. I get vision, I attack. Do I use the power this turn? I do. Max force, baby. So I get some nice boost. An extra one movement. Get my copters in position. Beep, beep. Get some vision over here. Okay, I see there's an anti -air. Now I'm like, okay, this one's going to die. So I can use this to uh, kill other things. I get a little greedy, maybe. I go in for that tank over there, boom! Kill off that anti-air right there, because I want my copters to have free reign. Boom, dead. Copter comes in, acting with impunity. Tank coming in, nah. I forgot, though, the last term, there was an artillery over here. Uh, there's still artillery there, and I'm gonna pay the price for not uh, checking the replay on that. You know, like I said, I wasn't put too much time into it. Anyway, this recon comes in, I'm like, okay, all the shit's over here. Mr. Beep Beep, the recon at the bottom's gonna get some work in. And might as well weaken off the infantry, put some pressure so he has to dedicate resources to the bottom uh, to prevent me from getting this property right there. So, going pretty decently for me so far. I have the income lead, I have the temporary unit count lead. Uh, yeah, things are going pretty well. Then the artillery come in. Boom. 
I don't know why he did that. I guess to get charge. Random ass tank coming out of the woodwork over there. Attacking my recon. That's a weird engagement. I don't know how many times I've ever seen an artillery attack a recon, but that's just like weird to me. It's like just one of those no-nos. Then he uses super snipe. Forget about using a uh, power. He uses his superpower, which is just weird because most people just spam the power because the power gives you the same firepower boost as the superpower. The superpower just gives you two range instead of one, but it doesn't give you any more firepower boost than the first. So I was a little confused by that, but then suddenly I just get randomly slacked by artillery from God knows where. And I'm like, oh shit, stupid super snipe. Stupid sexy super snipe. I just, uh, I was so over it. I was like, well, my offensive just died in its infancy over there. And then I see a copter. I'm like, man, he built like a day five tank as grip for an artillery. Now he's building copters? This guy is changing up the grit meta as we speak. Damn. I, I had nothing but respect for these kind of things right here. You know, it's just, uh, forget about spamming artillery. I like, I like his, uh, his use. So here, I bring my infantry here just as a death throw to get attack off on this artillery. I'm like, there's two artillery there. There's gotta be. So I bring that in as a death throw. I get an attack off and I reveal the other one. This was a nice chain. I was proud of that. Despite the fact that I know there's an anti-air or, or something over there. So I'm like sacking this copter at this point, but I'm like, ugh, that was so ugly. And I need to heal my units. Like I said, unit count is king. I have money. I'm ahead 3K in income. I'm about to be ahead 4K in income. Money ain't no thing but a chicken wang. Like, I will heal my units all day long. I don't give a shit. So I withdraw my one HP and two HP tank uh, with the intention of healing them up, which I do. My recon does a little attack over there for the lulls before it dies. And I see uh, there's a whole bunch of shit in the middle. And that recon's gonna die. But he is nowhere to even getting close to capturing these properties up there, which is my goal. I am still doing well on the income. But like I said before, kills off a unit. And these artillery aren't dying. They're living. It's so frustrating to have these live artillery. They're just gonna heal up in a few turns. And then there's another one slinking over to the top over there. I'm like, what is going on? Killing off my units. My vision is so shitty right now. It's just garbage. And all I have is weakened little uh, tanks to deal with it. But I don't give up. Oh no, I'm behind five on the income, which I'm five on the unit count. Uh, it sucks. But I get copters every turn. I have a 3K to 4K income lead throughout the whole game. I got the mun muns. We're doing pretty good in the money. I bring my recon up here. I'm like, you're not getting away this time, you little shitty 4 HP artillery. I'm gonna beat the shit out of you this time. So I bring in all my copters. I knew there was an artillery there, so I bring my copter in range instead of an artillery. Uh, I, okay, well, I still, okay, that tank's dead, but. <laughs> Oh yeah, I wanted to block it with the attack. I was like, I'm gonna overload him. There's gonna be so many copters, so much shit going on, he won't even know what hit him. I see this anti-air over here. I'm like, oh, I can't go over there. I see this copter over here, like, oh. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna use these two copters to kill the tank, why not? There's probably another anti-air, but whatever. He's got the unit count there, it's frustrating. But look, I'm already back to equal in the unit count because I'm pumping out B-copters every single turn. Look at this chain. There's so many freaking B-copters, it's nutty. And, uh, yeah, he did have an anti-air. And it's still one-shots, despite it being Maria, and still one-shots. So I was kind of pissed about that. What the hell? What the incestual sister are you doing? I'm attacking an anti-air to a recon? Don't understand. Anyway, he's just going balls to the wall now. Over at the bottom and over here, he's just really putting on the pressure. I have no units in the area. He's putting his freaking artillery on my doorstep. I'm like, uh, that's kind of annoying. Can you please not do that? <laughs> kind of triggers me. So I was a little upset about that. And I have just enough for a power. Do I use it? I get some vision. Get some more vision. Then I'm like, all right, I need it. I can't allow this, this slow creep in of all his units. And I'm like, all right, if I kill this artillery, meow, I can kill that. I can one shot that B copter. So bring in the tanky. Don't get the kill. I really wanted to kill some of his vision, but I bring in the other one, just do it, and then boom, doesn't quite kill. I needed the super to do more damage there, but look at all these artillery, and look at these anti are so annoying. But I have a lot of numbers. I got I got tanks, I got anti uh, let's go. Bring in the copter, kill that, bring in the copter, kill that, bring in the copter, boom. I, and I, I prayed, I was like, please, no infantry block in the way. 
one shot the copter. I felt really good about that. Basically halved uh, his, his, his unit value. He had uh, 8,000 and I brought him down for, to a good bit. So I felt pretty good about this turn, right? And so it's Spooty's turn, right? And uh, starts capping this property over here and then thus begins the bad stuff. Kills off my copter, I'm like, fast. Killed off one of my copters. And it comes with another snipe attack. And these, you, you thought these stupid artillery were dead? No, no. And these stupid tanks? No, they're alive. And they're well. This artillery nearly one-shots one of my tanks. This artillery that I should have killed uh, does not more damage. Starts capping this property over here. And uh, it's just not looking good. He's capping this property up here. He's capping this property down here. I have the income lead. I have a 4K income lead. But I just, I don't have the unit count. And all my units that are alive are weakened. I can't reveal things in forests anymore without losing units. And he's about to close in this income gap unless I stop this with a copter. This is my only stoppage. And he's going to have either a copter or another anti-air in play. So I, I saw this and I, I resigned. That's right, I really resigned. I had 29,000 in the bank. 29,000. I could build a neo tank and a tank this turn. I could have built a bomber and a recon and an infantry. I could build so many things. The thing is, ugh, grid is just so good when your unit count gets low. There's no clawing back. Doesn't matter how much funds you had. If I had a neo tank, it's still going to die in two shots to an artillery. If I had a medium tank, two shots to an artillery. A tank is two shots to an artillery, if not one, if he's using a power. Uh, like. You can't claw back with grit. That's why you have to strike early, but I feel like the reason I gave up so early was because, yeah, I just, I, I, I was pressured the whole game to put on the offensive and I just couldn't keep up the, pa the pressure. It is just too much for me. And I think that's why Eagle is the best here and not actually Max. I think you need, you need something that can like actually build up your forces and not feel compelled to attack every turn. Because if I don't attack and I get the income lead earlier, He's gonna beat the shit out of me, and I felt compelled to attack. And let's look at that KD over there, like, um... Woo! Yeah, so the deaths and kills, like, uh... It doesn't say numbers as much, but... It's more about the numbers than the, like, uh... The number of units rather than the value, so... 9, 16, 18. I lost 18 units, and I killed 12. So he's got 6 more than me. On a 2 base map like that, that's 2 terms of production, including copters. Uh, so I was not feeling good about that. I had so much money, but in, my, Grit does not care about money. Like I said, Neo tanks aren't going to make any difference to Grit. That's just more artillery fodder. Uh, so I was, uh, anyway, let's go back in the game. I know it was an early design, but let's go back in the game where we can see both what's going on because I want to praise what Spoot did. So let's go back to the beginning because he just broke the meta as Grit. He does not play like a normal Grit player would. Oop, let's do both. So he builds a tank first from the medium, from the middle right there, which is broken. Does not follow the meta at all, just breaks precedent right there. And I like that a lot. He caught me completely off guard. That is a recon buster right there. He could catch a recon off guard. I built two recons to start the game. I mean, uh, let's, 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 let's forget that. So I like that build. Not building an early artillery like most people would. Oh, artillery. Oh, recon. Yeah. Look, I like this. I like it. And then I like how we built a B copter later. So pretty good start. He went for the aggressive properties first, which is ballsy, but it worked out for him. So you see the tank already came into play, completely indestructible, because if I attack that, I'm getting blasted to pieces by this artillery over there. Like I said, I couldn't attack these things earlier because he had the artillery in place. I was right about all the things. Like, my intel was good. I knew what was going on. Like, I acted smartly in terms of warriors units were and whatnot. The thing is, like, it's just too hard. I, I had to have enough time to build up my units. I think my one mistake was I should have put the pressure, but I should have had all my tanks at the top. I had one infantry at the bottom or some shit, and then just went all out and basically just beat the shit out of him at the base. I think I, I, I'd have to overextend, use my power, have six tanks against three artillery, and then I could win it. But like, if I'm spread evenly throughout, like I kind of was, I had some recons at the bottom, I had some tanks at the bottom, I got punished because Grit had the death ball in the middle and he could sort of shift from the top, he could shift to the bottom. That's the thing. The top and the bottom are the most important here. Let's not be wrong. Like, I got the most income. However, the middle is the most important in terms of front shifting, and I was not able to front shift at all. I was completely separated. I was separated at the seams. I had one on the top and one at the bottom. My top one was stronger, granted, but he was able to really take advantage of that. And, uh, 
Yeah, I just look at these two bad boys right there, and I mean, it would be nice if I could come in with these tanks right here, but see, he blocks off the infantry, he blocks off the tank, he has another infantry blocking over there, he just knows what he's doing. He's just a strong-ass player, I just... So after this match, I felt kind of bad, I was like, oh, man, I lost to Grid as Max, like, that's just kind of like the scarlet letter, I was like, I was embarrassed. But then I talked to a bunch of people, I was talking, you know, I was like... Actually, Grid is actually pretty strong on this map. Because of these forests, it's hard to reveal them. There's a lot of force from the CAN. You don't need to build recons because these mountains provide vision. Didn't build a single recon in the game, which allowed him to build more anti-air, more artillery, more tanks. So that really helped him out right there. Uh, so Grid is actually much stronger in this map than I originally thought. I, like I said, I think Eagle is the best. I only pick Eagle now. I think he was a little through caution in the wind a little bit uh, early on because he didn't even know about all of these things up here yet and he kind of went balls to the wall over here. I, I could have had multiple tanks over there and punched him, but other than that, I thought he played like hell of a, like how do we even break through this? Like I kill off that tank, I have to reveal this artillery. I can't just attack it. I have to reveal it, then attack it. And then how do I even get to the second artillery if I do get to that one? And then there's a third artillery over there and God forbid I get a power and then he can fire on whatever attacks that artillery. Like it's just impossible. I can't break that. It's impossible. And despite that, I still was unsuccessful at the and unsuccessful at my top push, knowing that all these forces are right there. I backed up and attacked up here, but it still didn't work. So it was very frustrating. But I learned I learned that Max doesn't always equal beating Grit. I think on a different map, Max would probably beat the shit out of Grit, but I think this one in particular, just the right atmosphere, just the right terrain, the mountains and the forests, and the you have dedication to revealing a forest before attacking it, just once you get behind on the unit count, you're screwed. There's no coming back. That's why I resigned. It might seem like an early resign. I could have played five more days. I would have had more unit value the whole time. It would have been fine. Had three Neo tanks and yeah, but then I have 13 units and he has 25 and the game is over. It looks like it's not from the view, uh, unit count. It looks like it's not from the uh, from the income, or uh, from the unit value and the, from the income, but the unit count is really what matters for grit. And once you lose that income, val uh, that unit count, you're basically screwed. And this is an impenetrable wall. Well played by Spood. I, I prefer showing the games I lose on uh, on this. Probably why I haven't shown a game I've done in a while because I've won a lot of games recently and I shot up the ladder. Uh, but I like analyzing the games I lost and this was just some food for thought. It wasn't quite a banger, but I just wanted to show how Grit can be powerful using vision denial, especially in these forests over here. Like I have to move one here and then attack. It's just, it was really, it's hard with two bases. Three bases? Oh, sure, I throw an infantry and I can reveal an attack and whatnot and have follow-ups, but two bases is tough. Two base lower income. Artillery are cheap, you can really take advantage of that. Anyway, I hope you guys learned something. I know a lot of people followed this game while it was happening. Probably like 35 plus people were watching the game or following it at the very least. So I hope you guys learned something. Uh, Spoot is a very strong player. Maybe he'll be in the next Fog Goblin Goblet. Who knows? Uh, yeah, so anyway, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.